uh, now since last one month we have uh, new first year surgical oncology students who have joined they must understand uh, the paradigm shift that is happening in the organ preservation protocol in various solid tumors more so in the rectum lot of concepts hypotheses which were there but lack significant evidence now very robust good randomized control trials are coming so the rectal cancer treatment is changing predominantly and those who attended asco recently know that if you have mmr deficient and how a single agent uh, you know immunotherapy in an advanced rectal cancer as a single modality in a very short early case showed a dramatic response even though it's too early times but you can understand the checkpoint inhibitors neoadjuvant treatment completing all the treatment like what it happened in breast cancer we started with sandwich therapy then it came to sequential therapy then we complete all the neoadjuvant chemo then we put the knife similar thing has happened but in rectum it is not so simple various factors are there preservation of sphincter functional sphincter anti rectal syndrome delay in waiting for surgery its resultant complication in the surgery morbidity not able to do minimal access after such a strong neoadjuvant total treatment where the conversion rates are traditionally 7% more than go more than 10 12% sequel on blood transfusions which should be avoided in colorectal we know for every blood transfusion done intraop or immediate post op the survival drops down by 2 to 3 months and then the now functioning after a tnt so it's a very complex topic four five randomized control trial got you know summarized in last two year so with uh, you know is a very able student he has exams going on now but still he was worried i told this is the best preparation for exam and somesh bhai who is my teacher all of us actually learned from him i got trained in his unit uh, in gcri and i could see his area of passion for sphincter preserving supra levator very close intersphincter uh, resections he used to do and the concept of integrating short course and total u adjuvant uh, so it's my honor uh, you know my teacher and one of our renowned surgeon and academician professor dr somesh bhai is there and jagannath area of interest is gi anko excellent surgeon uh, very very you know academic uh, predominant area is gi anko even though he is fully trained surgical oncologist like us so thank you very much thank both of you for accepting sir thank, thank you, you thank you thank you for having me uh, over to ved so ved will finish the whole presentation he is prepared well excellent then somesh bhai uh, will interpret that and also give a general concept uh, then uh, you know jagannath uh, then we will actually go back and see the q and a and chat box please utilize this opportunity thank you and over to you ved thank you sir good morning everyone So today I'll be presenting on the organ preservation for rectal adenocarcinoma OPRA trial. So before we begin, let's uh, understand this history timeline. This is history timeline which elegantly sums up important landmark trials in the management of rectal adenocarcinoma. It shows how management of rectal cancer has greatly evolved over time. Previously, surgery was not standardized and local recurrence was the main concern the local recurrence was around 30% almost one third of the patient had a local recurrence after surgery however the introduction and global implementation of tme uh, by professor hill reduced the local recurrence drastically from 30% to around 10 to 11% so in order to reduce local recurrence further the use of multimodality treatment was considered and so uh, pre operative radiation followed by tme was introduced and as evidenced by dutch tmb at uh, swedish rectal cancer trial the addition of radiation reduced the local recurrence further to around 5% in 2004 sor et al from german rectal cancer study group concluded that pre operative chemo radiation therapy significantly reduces local recurrence with better local control better sphincter preservation and less great free force toxicity so this was a pivotal study in establishing pre operative chemo radiation as a standard of care for locally advanced rectal cancer then several questions raised whether uh, it, uh, it should be short course radiation therapy or long course radiation therapy 
whether it should be early surgery or delayed surgery. We all know that short course radiation therapy is given over five days and long course radiation therapy is given over five weeks. So short course radiation therapy is convenient, less time consuming and less expensive. And moreover, it is less resource intensive. So, uh, so there was search for uh, uh, short course radiation therapy as a good modality of treatment. A Stockholm 3 trial demonstrated that short course radiation therapy with delayed surgery is a viable alternative to long course radiation therapy. And in fact, delayed surgery led to increased tumor regression grade and PCR rate without affecting post-operative complications. So meanwhile, there was also search for improving disease-free survival and overall survival because we had achieved good local control with free of chemo radiation and TM. So the distant metastasis became the most common cause of failure. EORTC 2291 concluded that post of chemotherapy does not improve outcome when given after free of chemo radiation. A Stockholm free trial concluded that short course radiation therapy with delayed surgery is viable alternative to long course chemo radiation therapy. So we can exploit this window of opportunity to administer systemic chemotherapy and ultimately move the chemotherapy regimen to free of radiation and that is known as total new adjuvant therapy. So these are the two landmark trials for total new adjuvant therapy, Rapido and Sodic 23. So these uh, Stockholm 3 and uh, URTC 2291 set the stage for total new adjuvant therapy and and Rapido and Prodic 23 were the landmark trials for uh, total new adjuvant therapy. So you can, we can observe that throughout this entire timeline, there is development in each field. There is development in surgery. As we move to CME, there is development in systemic therapy. And there was uh, development in radiation therapy. There was, in fact, uh, development in, even in radiology, the MR, uh, where Mercury trial established MRI as, as predicting uh, CRM. So these are the landmark trials in the management of rectal cancer and according to their experimental arms. Today we'll be briefly discussing on total adjuvant therapy, that is uh, Rapido and Prodig 23, and mainly on non-operative management and OPERA trial and German fluid trial. So uh, we all know that uh, in rectal cancer, local recurrence is no longer a major problem thanks to TME and uh, pre-operative chemoradiation therapy. So this is OPRA trial, that is organ preservation in patients with rectal adenocarcinoma treated with total neoadjuvant therapy. This is prospective randomized phase two multi-institutional trial published in ASCO in Journal of Clinical Oncology in April 2022. Before we discuss further, let us first understand what is total neoadjuvant therapy. So the widely accepted standard of care for local locally advanced rectal cancer is new adjuvant chemo radiation followed by surgery followed by chemotherapy. However, with uh, current strategy, almost uh, 25 to 70 percent would not receive adjuvant systemic chemotherapy for various reasons. And also there was no significant effect on distant recurrence or overall survival rates. And we saw that URTC 2291 concluded that post of chemotherapy does not improve outcomes when given after free of chemo radiation. So systemic chemotherapy was moved before surgery and that is known as total new adjuvant therapy. Now total new adjuvant therapy can be of two types, induction chemotherapy and consultation chemotherapy. When the systemic therapy is given before chemo radiation, that is known as induction chemotherapy, while when chemotherapy is given after chemo radiation, that is known as consultation chemotherapy. So there are several advantages of initial chemotherapy in total new adjuvant therapy. The first and foremost important advantage is it improves the compliance rate. The, the patients are about 90% of the patients are compliant in initial chemotherapy in PNP, while only 50% are compliant with adjuvant chemotherapy. And another important advantage is that it tackles micrometastatic disease often. So there is potential to prevent distant recurrence. There is more pathological complete response, there is more tumor down and in addition, 
which help us to assess in vivo chemotherapy sensitivity. Also, there is stoma-free chemotherapy delivery and early, early closure of stoma after definitive surgery. And one more potential advantage is that non-operative management, that is organ preservation, can be considered in selected group of patients. So uh, these are two landmark trials, RAPIDO and PRODICT 23 trials for total immune adjuvant therapy. RAPIDO stands for rectal cancer and preoperative induction therapy, followed by dedicated operation. And PRODICT 23 is French or acronym for Partnership Research Oncology and Digestive Group uh, 23. Both are phase three randomized control trials for total immune adjuvant therapy. RAPIDO was uh, published in Lancet in 2020 and Product 23 was published in 2021 in the same journal. Rapido looks for total new adjuvant therapy with short course radiation therapy, while Product 23 looks for total new adjuvant therapy with long course chemo radiation. Now, uh, both of these uh, trials had almost similar uh, baseline characteristics, but uh, Rapido had included patients with high risk of uh, locally advanced cycle cancer. That is the, 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 the patients who are of higher stage, uh, higher nodal burden and EMDI positive with major sexual factor involvement in case of rapido trial. So uh, when we compare the results of both, both of these two randomized controlled trials, we'll see that TN, TNT group had significantly better disease related treatment failure and a disease free survivor in Rapido and Prodig 23 respectively. In addition, both of these trials show that giving systemic chemotherapy at early stage in the form of TNT can reduce the distant metastasis in the TNTL. And the most important, PCR was very high, almost double in TNT in both of these trials. So this is very, uh, this is something very thought provoking that engenders hypothesis that it is possible to achieve higher organ preservation or non-operative management with total new adjuvant therapy. And these observations mean that surgery can be avoided in selected group of patients making wait and watch or organ preservation as a safe and curative option. So by and large, there are three issues in the management of rectal cancer, local recurrence, distant metastasis, and quality of life. The local difference can be improved by improving surgical techniques like TNV and use of multimodality treatment that is chemotherapy and radiation therapy. Distant metastasis can be improved by adopting total new adjuvant therapy. Also, quality of life can be improved by making the patient colostomy free by adopting stricter preservation surgery like interstitial resection in case of low rectal cancer or by following non operative management. So we all know that the treatment in oncology is moving from maximum tolerable treatment to minimum effective treatment. The organ preservation is coming up in a big way, like it is already established in uh, CA larynx, CA breast, as breast conservation surgery. Similarly, we are looking for organ preservation in rectal carcinoma. So we'll, uh, we'll uh, go through the organ preservation second aspect of this trial. So why organ preservation is <laughs> coming up uh, in a big way because uh, the conventional surgery is associated with uh, mortality and morbidity like bleeding and asthmatic leak. There is sexual and urogenital dysfunction, there is bowel dysfunction, there is a need for permanent colostomy, there is a poor quality of life. So all of this uh, led to think about organ preservation in rectal cancer. So this is popularly known as Haber gamma approach Actually, uh, she set the stage for organ preservation in the adenocarcinoma. As early as 1991, she uh, started this study where she had selected 265 rectal cancer patients and, and she was able to achieve 26.8% uh, of sustained clinical complete response and only 8.3% uh, uh, patient requiring local effusion after regrowth. And the overall survival and disease uh, for the survival were also encouraging. 
However, there were several critics to this study because uh, she did use MRI to stratify the patients, and this study was done pre MRI era. Similarly, there are several other retrospective case series and prospective observational studies that suggest organ, organ preservation is feasible for selected group of patients. In 2018, Lancet uh, published uh, this uh, article, and this is a large uh, scale international weight and watch database study. Here, the results are encouraging as it reports a distant metastasis of 8%, which is a specific survival of 94%, and overall survival of 87.9%. However, to date, there was no randomized controlled evidence regarding weight and watch or organ preservation study. So, here comes Popular trial study organ preservation in patients with rectal adenocarcinoma treated with total new attachment therapy. The reason why we are discussing it today is that there are very limited prospective data on the role of TNT, that is total new adjuvant therapy for organ preservation in locally advanced rectal cancer. And this OPRA trial has come up as a ray of hope. So OPRA stands for organ preservation in rectal adenocarcinoma trial, and it is a prospective phase two randomized multi center clinical trial. So, um, so uh, the excellent survival of patients with uh, pathological complete response in TNT challenge the added benefit of TME for these patients. We discussed TNT is a delivery of chemotherapy before surgery, and it can be of two times, uh, two types: uh, induction chemotherapy and consideration chemotherapy. When uh, chemotherapy is uh, delivered before chemoradiation, that is induction chemotherapy. And uh, when chemotherapy is delivered after chemoradiation, that is considered chemotherapy. So this, uh, in this study, uh, the, the inclusion criteria were uh, the age more than 18 years, the stage was 2 and stage 3, and biopsy proven rectal adenocarcinoma. They excluded the patients who were uh, recurrent rectal cancer, the distant metastasis are diagnosis, the registry of pelvic PDD. So this is the trial schema of OPRA trial, where they randomize the patient into two groups, induction chemotherapy group and first induction chemotherapy group. In induction chemotherapy, the induction was chemotherapy, and the chemo systemic therapy was given first, followed by the chemoradiation, and in first induction chemotherapy, chemoradiation was given first, followed by systemic therapy. After that, uh, uh, almost eight, after eight to 12 weeks, uh, after completion of uh, this new advanced treatment, Patients were re-estaged, and the tumor re-estaging was performed by digital rectal examination, endoscopic examination, MRI, and CT, thorax, abdomen, and pelvis. The response uh, was graded as complete or near complete response and uh, as incomplete response. Patients who had complete or near complete response were offered uh, uh, to participate in a standardized uh, weight and watch uh, protocol, and patients who had incomplete response for recommended TME. So uh, the protocol they followed, uh, the radiation therapy was uh, given uh, 45 in, today in 1.8 fraction over 25 uh, fraction, including the regional nodes, along with uh, 10 to 16 gray uh, boost. Uh, this is via simultaneous integrated boost in IMRT or sequential in radiocrt And they used only one radio sensitizer, either Capsicabin or uh, the high chloro uracil. The chemotherapy protocol was uh, uh, the chemotherapy regimen they used was either eight cycle of Colfox every uh, two week week or uh, five cycles of Capox every uh, three week. So uh, the wait and watch protocol consisted of digital rectal examination and flexible sigmoidoscopy every four monthly. Uh, rectal MRI every six monthly and CT thorax every one year. So it uh, doesn't mean uh, these patients were only deprived uh, were always uh, deprived of surgery. Only patients with a sustained clinical response compared with previous evaluation were recommended to continue wait and watch uh, protocol. While patients with uh, signs of lack of ongoing response compared with a previous evaluation or with signs of tumor growth uh, on on this evaluation were recommended to undergo TM. Now, the primary endpoint was three year disease free survival, while the secondary endpoints for organ preservation, uh, TME free survival, local recurrence, distant recurrence, and overall survival. 
Additional endpoints were bowel urinary and sexual function and quality of life. Statistical analysis. Uh, the trial was designed as two stand alone phase two studies with a similar hypothesis disease free survival, organ preservation, local difference free survival, and each cell metastasis free survival were analyzed using Fox regression and summarized using Kaplan Maya term. So, this is a concert diagram of OPERA trial. From 2014 to uh, uh, 2020, 360 patients were registered to this trial from 18 centers and uh, 324 were eligible, out of which 150 were randomized to induction chemotherapy and 166 were uh, randomized to consultation chemotherapy. The remaining consult diagram will discuss in the third section. So uh, this is the baseline demographic and clinical characteristics which were well balanced between the two groups. But uh, however, the most patients were uh, males and uh, and had stage three tumors, and all of them were and most of them were located five centimeters from the anal bulb on average. So uh, after median follow up three years, uh, this is the Kaplan Meyer uh, estimates. Uh, the figure A uh, is a disease free survival and the figure B is a overall survival. The figure A on your left hand side, uh, we can see uh, the, the blue line represents the induction chemotherapy and the red line represents the consideration chemotherapy. However, there is no gap between these two lines. So that suggests the, that uh, the values do not differ. Uh, the three are disease free survival were similar in induction chemotherapy and consideration chemotherapy. And that is 76% uh, and it did not differ much. So overall survival uh, is provided, uh, but uh, there is some gap that is not significant statistically, but uh, this uh, data will require additional follow-up uh, to establish the overall survival. Now coming back to the uh, diagram, so out of, uh, at the at the at the end of the, this TNT, uh, you can see that say uh, 79 patients underwent a surgery for 41 in the induction chemotherapy and 38 in the concentration chemotherapy. But uh, when we look at non-operating management, 105 uh, patients uh, as big as 105 patient uh, in one out of 146 and and. Uh, this uh, 120 patients out of 150 were offered non operative management. So, after excluding this tumor regrowth, almost altogether 63 out of 185, that is 60 percent, in induction chemotherapy, and 87 out of uh, 87 out of 120, that is 73 percent, in, uh, in consolidation chemotherapy, had organ preservation with continuous surgery. That number is huge. Now, so the, the results for organ preservation, we can see that three year uh, TME, uh, TME free survival was better in consolidation chemotherapy than induction chemotherapy. And patients who underwent TME after re-staging uh, and patients who underwent TME after tumor regrowth had similar disease free survival. So it doesn't affect whether we, we do TME uh, before or later on after tumor regrowth. And also, but however, however, the rate of uh, splinter uh, setting surgery was higher in patients having PME at re-staging rather than having PME after re -view. So similarly, uh, this is a uh, couple of my estimates and uh, uh, figure C on, on your left hand side, you can see there is no gap between the two lines uh, for uh, disease, uh, sorry, for local recurrence free survival and uh, figure D on your right hand side is for distant metastasis free survival. Is, uh, there is a slight gap uh, that is the concentrated induction chemotherapy has 84% uh, of disease uh, distant metastatic free survival, while while uh, the concentration chemotherapy has 82% of uh, distant metastatic free survival. So, uh, so uh, there was higher organ preservation rate in opera trial than uh, what was reported uh, in, than uh, the PCR rates reported in recent rapido and prodic trial. Higher organ preservation rate uh, in patients treated with uh, concentration chemotherapy 
was uh, was consistent with this uh, German twelve trial. So when we see this uh, uh, two trial, Opera and German twelve trial, both of them are phase two trial, and both of them randomized almost three hundred patients to two similar arms, that is induction chemotherapy and concentration chemotherapy groups. And uh, and uh, in uh, Opera trial, the the concentration chemotherapy has higher organ preservation. Similarly, in German, we had also higher preservation in concentration in concentration chemotherapy. Group. So uh, this uh, uh, this generates uh, the the conclusion that upfront chemo radiation therapy followed by chemo appears better than reverse sequence in neoadjuvant treatment. However, both of these phase two trials were uh, different when we compare the uh, intensity of oxalic therapy, the duration of chemotherapy, the dose of radiation therapy, uh, the, the, the uh, radio sensitizer in chemoradiation therapy, and the interval from in the chemoradiation uh, surgery. But uh, this generates uh, the hypothesis that this is uh, uh, the, the use of PNP can be utilized for organ preservation. Now, the, the advantages are that uh, if, uh, the uh, organ preservation in TNT, there is a higher organ preservation rate, there is very high complete response uh, rate, uh, which implies surgery can be delayed. And the patient has better quality of life with uh, delayed surgery. And there is a, a, a similar disease free survival in both of these two study groups. But uh, the drawback of the study was that the biopsies were not performed in any of the uh, uh, weight and mass protocols. Lack of clarity was there to define clinical complete response. And, uh, and of course, there is less in synthesis preservation when there is tumor regrowth. And we require to follow up the patient's lifelong to know the long term details. And we do not know what is the outcome when we salvage after, uh, uh, after late recurrence. So uh, the conclusion uh, from uh, this study that uh, TNT and uh, selective weight and watch uh, or TME on the basis of uh, tumor response allows uh, organ preservation. The concentration chemotherapy appears uh, to result in higher organ preservation compared with induction chemotherapy. However, a longer follow-up is needed, uh, that is uh, more than five years, 10 years, and a large phase three trial with a non imperative design is the need of the hour. So these are uh, these are several ongoing clinical trials uh, for uh, non-surgical management. We are hoping for a good result in trigger uh, trial, star take, wow, and greater twelve trials, which are phase three trials, looking for this same uh, same outcome. So 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 we have evolved from maximum tolerable treatment to minimum effective treatment, and the more we learn, the more we realize we are not performing surgery. And this goes in line with the frame of saying a good surgeon knows how to perform, a better surgeon knows when to perform, and the best surgeon knows when not to perform. This is uh, Habergama, who said the stage for organ preservation strategy in rectal adenocarcinoma. Thank you. Thank you, Ved, for uh, uh, an excellent presentation. Uh, I think all of us appreciate the clarity of thoughts and understanding. It came out very clearly from your presentation. Uh, together with Dr. Dixit, I propose that we take up each issue one by one and try and un understand the different aspects of this trial and of TNT generally overall uh, in a stepwise fashion. Uh, Every, every study throws up uh, some findings and uh, some gray areas. And let us uh, try and look at those uh, positive findings and, and those gray areas, uh, if we can understand a little more about uh, this entire concept of TNT and its objective. Uh, can I share my slides? And uh, Dr. Dixit, do you have any slides? Uh, no, sir. Actually, I, I will contribute as and uh, when yes. required. So, uh, so uh, I, I thought that all of us uh, can uh, comment on this. This is not a presentation. I have just raised issues and uh, I suggest that all of us can. Uh,
Dr. Swami, should we share the screen? Can you see in the, the slides? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Seen. Okay. So uh, all of us uh, will pitch in. Uh, so I'll start with asking Ved. Uh, uh, you set the stage very nicely and uh, made it clear that this was a relevant and appropriate uh, study topic. Is that right, Ved? And what was the relevance? Uh, you said that uh, it was about organ preservation. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, yeah. And you also showed the gaps in rectal cancer treatment that uh, on one hand, uh, we have increased the local control rate, but we have still not, I mean, we are ending up with higher distant metastasis. Distant rate. metastasis. Right, so you see uh, the, this uh, increase in uh, local control came about uh, after we shifted from uh, selective adjuvant radiation through uniform new adjuvant radiation, right? Yes, so yes. All, all, all patients are radiated. Earlier, uh, before uh, 2004, I believe, uh, selective patients were being sent for radiation. So there was an issue of compliance with radiation. And uh, at the same time, the issue of excluding patients who did not need was also there. That was the advantage. Now, uh, we are trying to address distant metastasis rate right, primarily by shifting new adjuvant chemotherapy, uh, adjuvant chemotherapy to the new adjuvant setting, right? So we are intensifying the treatment, yes. right? Uh, whenever we uh, intensify the treatment, uh, we are likely to end up with uh, uh, scope, uh, I mean, uh, the possibility that we are over treating some patients. Uh, and especially with a uh, treatment which is not very effective in rectal cancer. Uh, you said that this trial applies to locally advanced rectal cancers. Uh, does, it, does it at any point in the protocol identify which locally advanced rectal cancers it addresses? So stage two uh, and stage three, sir. Yeah, but where are they located? And uh, most of them were located distally, sir. Right. So this this distinction uh, is not clear in the yeah. open trial protocol. Whether they are uh, lower, I mean, what they mean by lower rectal cancers? Do you have any uh, definition of lower rectal cancers which is followed currently? Sir, uh, these, up to uh, five centimeters from the anal cut. Uh, actually, so actually, uh, Dr. Ved, I just want to little uh, contribute to what sir has said. Uh, see, normally, you know, every few, five centimeters of the entire rectum, if you take a 15 centimeter length, every five, five centimeter is divided upper, mid and lower third. And yes. normally you need to calculate the, uh, you know, the anorectum, I mean, the anal canal, which is about 2.4 centimeters. So, uh, so 2.4 plus 5, any any tumor which uh, stays at 7 to 8 centimeters still becomes a low rectal cancer. Yes. So, it is not exactly the 5 centimeters because you need to add up anal canal length. Okay, so then mid-rectum, uh, so we have got what is called the valves. Uh, whenever you do the colonoscopy, you see the first valve. So that above between these two valves becomes the lower and then between the second and the third becomes the middle and then the upper like that. Probably it's uh, we, what in this study is critically looking, which is five centimeter, it's the mid portion of the lower rectal cancer. So it's not exactly the lower rectal cancer. So we need to extend a little bit more than the exact five centimeters. Right. So... Right, so this uh, trial doesn't clearly uh, tell us uh, which uh, of the rectal cancers they are addressing. Uh, the current classification uh, which is favored is that up to six centimeters from anal verge would call lower rectal cancers and up to the uh, uh, anterior uh, peritoneal reflection 
the deepest part would be the upper rectal cancers and anywhere in between all the cancers uh, uh, in between are the middle rectal cancers so that's the current classification as seen on mri because we are all going to go ahead with an mri based uh, staging uh, a rigid proctoscopy or rectoscopy is not very commonly performed and a flexible uh, proctoscopy or a sigmoidoscopy is full of errors so far as classifying these tumors as from the anal verger is concerned so mri remains the uh, cornerstone of classifying these tumors and which is not clear in the uh, criteria inclusion criteria of this uh, trial uh, if you look at the trial methodology and objectives, uh, would you call this uh, a well-designed trial? With Actually, it, it has uh, done uh, two uh, study, two standalone study in one uh, study. Yeah. It has not compared. Uh, there is no any um, control set, standard control to compare. Yeah, so both arms were experimental, but I think uh, that, that that's the smartness of the design. It has already, it is not testing TNT anymore. It is already testing organ preservation in TNT. This is the basic difference between uh, uh, Rapido and Prodage and other trials and this trial, that it has started on the premise that TNT is the standard of care. And if you practice TNT, how, what are the subsequent advantages we can derive out of TNT? Because the other trials, even though they practice TNT, they did not really extend the benefit of a complete pathological response or complete local control uh, to, to the selected patients. So that, that's a very smart design. It says that it's a single stage phase phase two trial. So uh, what are single stage and multi-phase uh, phase two trials? Can you elaborate on that? So a single stage uh, 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 trial, phase two trial, has a fixed number of patients. While a multi-stage trial is a smarter design that uh, uh, it, it looks at the smallest number of patients to tell us whether the, uh, the outcomes are really favorable or unfavorable. And if they are not fav uh, favorable, they would stop the the uh, trial at that point, and if they are favorable, they would increase the numbers and uh, look for the significant and whatever benefits are. Now, this trial uh, used something called near total uh, complete response, right? Uh, and uh, normally, uh, in a synoptic uh, reporting, we use MRTRG. So do you think that that's uh, that which is the more appropriate uh, for practice because your radiologist is not going to report on NCR, they would report on MRTRC. So both of uh, them should be taken in combination. So we'll come to that. Uh, for a response assessment, is a biopsy needed? Yes, a biopsy. Okay, just uh, let me show you uh, something here. So this was uh, the trial protocol uh, for a complete, near complete, and incomplete response. They used endoscopy, this DRE for tumors which could be reached, and an MRI. Right. So uh, it it doesn't include biopsy. And if you look at the uh, international guidelines, there's, there's uh, uh, a consensus form to uh, consensus group guidelines to look at the appropriate endpoints when we do such kind of studies. Because more and more such studies are coming up with different criteria for evaluation and outcomes and fixing the endpoint. And, and, and it says that uh, uh, a biopsy is really not endoscopic biopsy is not mandatory to define a near total complete response. Uh, because we know that, uh, I mean, if you are looking at MR TRG2 and MR TRG3, we don't know. I mean, a negative biopsy could, could be either of one of the two. So that is why they have uh, recommended that a biopsy should be excluded. Uh, it's not mandatory. You, you, you may do it, but it's not mandatory. 
uh, to work with that. Now, uh, if you look at this uh, near total complete response, if we extend the idea or the concept of minimal residual disease for solid tumors, normally if you have a minimal residual disease, you, you would treat them further with either local treatment or a systemic treatment. But in this trial, the NCR patients were just followed up. We also said that the regrowth, so they were treated at regrowth, and you said that, that the results at regrowth are poorer than when you have uh, uh, inter surgical intervention at the time of ICR, yes. right? So uh, that, that, that uh, uh, so this entire NCR thing probably in future trials might need to be looked into. And because they, uh, do you have any explanations why in this trial they have shown that you can have the uh, up to 50% organ preservation rates, which is, I mean, almost double of any other previous trials. Uh, because uh, they, they were uh, waiting sir, uh, for all in consultation chemotherapy, the period of the interval from uh, completion of chemo radiation was higher than the uh, in the induction chemotherapy. True, but overall, if, even if both of them are covered, we'll come to this later. Okay, so if you look at the trial results, would you say that the primary objective was achieved and the trial was positive or was it negative? Actually, uh, the disease-free survival, uh, disease survival was not achieved, sir, because historical control has also disease-free survival of 75%, and this trial also, the disease-free survival was around 76%. Right, and they, uh, the primary objective was to show uh, an improvement in disease-free survival by 10%, yes. which was not achieved. So, so far as the primary objective is concerned, this was a negative trial, right? And for that reason, this trial, had this been a positive trial, it would have gone on straight on to a phase three trial. For this reason, they cannot now extend this as into a phase three trial. But still, even though it, this is a negative trial, do you think it's going to affect influence on practice and outcome? Yes, sir. And um, because uh, because the only there are two uh, randomized or prospective studies for this uh, uh, utilizing total knee adjuvant therapy in locally advanced sector cancer, and it ha it is having similar similar disease free survival compared to historical control, though not better. So we can uh, utilize this uh, in selected group of cases. Right. So you see the point which I'm trying to make is that uh, there are uh, changes in practices which actually do not reflect changes in outcomes. When we change a practice, somehow we seem to promise our patients a little more. Uh, we should be careful about that, what we are trying to convey to our patients, that with a newer treatment, what more are we offering? Sometimes it's just another way of doing it. Uh, so far as the secondary objective, which was organ preservation. So this was the other smart thing about the trial. They conducted two studies with two different objectives uh, uh, in, 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 one, in one trial. So the secondary objective, would you say, was achieved or not? The second objective was achieved, sir. Right. So, so the secondary objective was uh, achieved. What uh, was still, what is still unknown, and we'll uh, wait for the updates, is what is the quality of life of the TME uh, versus uh, those patients who did not undergo a surgery and had non operative management. So that's an important thing which uh, we need to understand. Sir, uh, look, Dr. Yes. Uh, Somesh, sir, I just want to add. Yes, please. Because every time we, we say that post-rectal uh, uh, resection syndrome and all that, you know, those patients who have not undergone also surgery, there are some, uh, you know, quality of life issues. Absolutely. That, that, that has been not dealt uh, because still, you know, some sort of incomplete evacuation, then frequency of stools might be variable in those who are not operated also. That has been not dealt at all. 
because what happens in surgical thing there is a change in little axis of the uh, you know the rectum and the anal following this uh, uh, sphincter preservation surgery that is what is going to contribute but over a period of one year or so most of these syndromes will settle down with uh, you know medications so uh, so the uh, the non operative group who have been uh, undergone wait and watch policy their quality of life has been not dealt at all exactly so this 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 uh, one of the secondary objectives was to study quality of life and we hope that uh, once they publish the final results will will be able to see that dr ved uh, uh, you you said that living without a stoma was one of the other uh, benefits do you see any other benefits uh, with uh, this kind of an approach so uh, it appears to me and uh, dr dikshit can pitch in uh, that uh, possibly there could be some patients who would progress at a distant site while remaining uh, at a cr level uh complete response at the local uh, site and uh, it also opens up a more attractive paradigm for oligometastatic disease so uh, possibly uh, resectable liver limited metastasis uh, this this opens up a, a very attractive paradigm for those patients that in the interim period while you are just waiting and watching uh, you can do the uh, liver first approach carry on that liver first approach you have treated them with systemic treatment and you do the liver surgery also for these patients because for lower rectal cancer it's generally not advised to do the liver and and the primary at the same time generally uh, it's not uh, advised with this practice i mean it can be practiced but by and large you have to be careful about that uh, so uh, uh, you with which one of these would you offer to your patients offer a rapid over product uh, so it depends on the patient stage and but uh, if i have to choose any one out of three i would prefer to go with rapid over service okay uh, so you have shown uh, the most intense uh, uh, because uh, rapid over was about the worst possible patients t3 t4 yes. n2 lateral pelvic node disease uh, mrf involved mm -hmm. so uh, how does opera differ from rapid and prodis strategy which is the basic difference so rapid and prodis are on one side and opera is on the other side you see both the other both of them had had surgery sir in their arm but opera did not have True, but and all both of them had adjuvant chemotherapy for whatever is worth. Both of them have shown a seven percent disease-free survival advantage. Okay. Right. Uh, so uh, actually, they are not truly TNT. They are some I would call them TNT plus. And Opera is the between these three the only TNT because there is no treatment. Uh, Beyond, beyond the uh, surgical group, uh, what should be the order of neoadjuvant chemotherapy if maximum compliance is uh, aimed at? So uh, you see, uh, if you give induction, you have the highest compliance, right? And if you give concurrent, it tends to start falling with consolidation. so if you are this this would help you to decide whether you want to go for induction or chemo which which so if you have a t2 n2 disease would you go for consolidation or would you go for induction instead of a t3 t4 consolidation consolidation okay. but uh, t2 is likely to respond better to any form of uh, uh, local treatment and we are adding uh, i mean induction chemotherapy i mean consolidation chemotherapy anyway so uh, uh, i think we need to understand that this is is a heterogeneous group they have addressed uh, with similar treatments on both arms and uh, 
maybe uh, once they come up with the final results, the correlative evaluation of the biomarkers they have used, uh, circulating tumor DNA and so many other things. Uh, an interesting uh, issue comes up uh, is that if you have an NCR after uh, induction chemotherapy, uh, should we have double intensity local treatment or just a single uh, local treatment because NCR could respond to chemo radiation as well. And are we over treating these patients, subjecting them, them to both surgery or chemo radiation? Because only surgery could be equally effective for these patients. They are already downsized, downstaged. So uh, these are the issues which uh, we would need to address later on. And uh, this was what uh, Dr. Dixit was trying to say. Uh, that uh, you see uh, the quality of life of these patients who have a rectal preservation and who undergo a TNA. This is from the uh, Grecard uh, two. Uh, the colostomy rates, the fecal incontinence, sexual dysfunction, the major morbidity, and overall side effects, they are all very similar between the two groups. So uh, chemo radiation itself is fairly toxic for re rectal function. And uh, sometimes it could be equally toxic as a straightforward surgery for certain tumors, especially those situated higher up in the rectum. Uh, this was entirely based on clinical stage, right? Uh, and we know that uh, about 30 to 40% of patients would be having a persistent disease who seem to be having a CCR clinically. And the concern is that these patients with persistent disease, when they are on a wait and watch, their disease is remaining untreated for a long time. So this is what the ESMO uh, learning also says, that uh, you see the local regrowth for these patients is fairly high. And if you look at the uh, international wait and watch uh, registry, uh, salvage for local regrowth surgery falls to 78%. So 28% and, and almost 20% of one fifth of patients are losing out on an adequate surgery in the wait and watch uh, policy. So this this is, I mean, if, if because this takes into consideration patients who are outside of clinical trials. If you look at MSKCC, it is 100%. But how much of MSKCC kind of practice can be extended to all areas, especially, especially resource poor areas, uh, like our country and our patients. So these are the other issues which, which remain uh, of concern. The, we know that the compliance after for any subsequent treatment goes on decreasing after the first knee adjuvant treatment. So if you give them chemo radiation first, the compliance for consolidation chemotherapy goes, goes down. That was the reason that adjuvant chemotherapy uh, had a very poor compliance after C CRT and surgery. Right? Uh, so that raises philosophical issues that we are delaying the most effective curative treatment uh, for the majority. Uh, and uh, we are adding a treatment of little curative value. We do not say that we should not do that, uh, but, but we must be careful that uh, the curative value of adjuvant or new adjuvant systemic therapy for lower rectal cancers is not very high, unlike colonic cancers. And uh, the questionable value of adjuvant chemo after chemo radiation. So this further questions the, the, the concept of uh, uh, consolidation chemo radiation, uh, TNT protocol. So either uh, we adopt induction uh, if you are wanting to improve the overall survival or, or we uh, just omit it. What do these trials have to offer for upper rectal cancers? Would you treat upper rectal cancers like likewise or do you have different considerations for that? For up, upper rectal cancer, you can, uh, you can have colostomy free cell. So we can do end-to-end -end anastomosis. So I think 
you can go ahead with conventional surgery rather than organ preservation. Yes, okay. uh, but, but the issue of uh, a longer, uh, sometimes you may still need to do a colostomy. And the issue of uh, a lower compliance with adjuvant chemotherapy because the uh, adjuvant chemotherapy would become more important for these tumors. They behave more like colonic tumors. So uh, would you consider induction chemotherapy for these patients? So that's that's an uh, unanswered question. And possibly uh, these two arms would better serve different patient populations. So those with a higher risk of systemic failure can go for an induction. And those with a lower risk of uh, uh, systemic failure, high risk of local uh, failure can go for uh, the, the Rapido you said is your preferred protocol, but they, it treats very poor risk patients. So is it correct to extrapolate it to lower risk patients because you would be over treating them and all local treatment will add to the quality of life issues without really uh, impacting uh, much on the local control rates. If the patient is very keen on uh, organ preservation and he has tumor of high risk features, then he can offer in rapid trial. Another advantage is that it uh, delivers short course radiation therapy. So, so we have more time interval to have better pathological response. Agreed. So, if there is a regrowth of chemo uh, after chemo radiation, uh, uh, it is advised to undergo a surgery. But it's not clear till what time surgery is, surgery is most effective. He, you cited uh, the laryngeal preservation protocols, and it came out uh, later that uh, those who had a salvage later in the course of, uh, of surveillance had a poorer outcome than those who had a salvage earlier. So living with disease for a longer period of time possibly uh, affects uh, disease control rate. Now the question is for T3, T4 tumors, if you have a near adjuvant and near complete response, is local excision an appropriate option? And I would like Dr. Dixit to elaborate on this. I'm sure he has. So this is a very important entity because uh, however the good imaging still uh, you know all this t3 t4 tumors as such you know they uh, uh, whenever we talk of uh, loco regional control lymphadenectomy is also become the part of the treatment especially uh, you know there is almost a high percentage which can vary from 20 to 40 percent of the lymph nodes being involved in all this uh, locally advanced uh, rectal cancer probably the local excision itself will, will not be adequate for us to you know most of the time when you treat locally there can be still a regional failure in the lymph nodes i think it's still an inadequate way of management uh, but we we have to be very very selective uh, in uh, you know uh, uh, if it is early like t1 t2 probably it's quite good uh, choice but t3 t4 tumors all this patients have, need to have a proper lymphadenectomy. And, and uh, the other concern is that when we uh, wait for tumor to regrow, we possibly uh, end up with higher APR rates. At least this was evident in the Greg R2 trial that uh, you lose the chance for a splinter preservation in some of these patients. Uh, What, is, what are the appropriate methods to assess function and quality of life? Because this is the prime issue for patients who are on non-operative management. Okay. Uh, the bowel uh, functions are the urinary and sexual function need to be asked. asked sir. And there is PLQC 30 for knowing the quality of life to set in. So uh, would you recommend only uh, patient reported outcomes or would you also like to add some objective assessment of inorectal function? Objective response uh, can, should be done, sir, by doing a uh, literal examination and knowing the tone, 
sphincter tone just exactly so uh, the sphincter tone or the inner manometry none of these have been uh, considered in any of these trials and not in overall so so possibly uh, before offering uh, an NOM to a patient with poor uh, sphincter control anyway uh, we we have to be a little careful about intensifying the treatment and then leaving uh, them with with a poor uh, sphincter control uh, So uh, we, we, are, we have been talking about local excision after RT or CRT in all these trials. Uh, earlier trials also, I mean, uh, which have uh, focused on organ preservation. Is there any historical evidence that local excision uh, after uh, new adjuvant radiation or chemo radiation is, uh, uh, is, is this an evidence-based practice? Local excision for early T1 T tumors is well established. You can do a transcendental uh, excision uh, or transcendental microsurgery. Uh, but uh, after radiation, chemo radiation, do you have any evidence? Are you aware of any evidence? Sir, uh, sir Harold Gamma did local excision, sir. But not a prestige yeah. study. Right. So, uh, this was a, a, a trial uh, which which uh, actually the protocol cites also and it, it, it bases its local excision recommendation based uh, on this trial uh, that uh, the ECOSOC trial uh, but the issue is that they were looking at good risk tumors you see they are t2 and 0 less than four uh, four centimeters and local excision was advised when they had uh, a the tumor were further downstaged. With a T3, T4 tumor, uh, uh, we don't know uh, that the residual disease is really a small YP T0, YP T1, because all YP T2, YP T3 would be subjected to a further TME. So these patients of T3, T4 who undergo a local excision turn out to be YP T2 or T3 would now need a second surgery in form of a TME. So that again is a concern. Uh, you see in the Greca 2, 35% needed a completion TME after local excision. And, and uh, Greca 2 had some, didn't have such bad tumors at all. So uh, the issue of near complete response and a local excision for a near complete response is, is something which causes concern should cause concern in our minds so far as organ preservation uh, objectives are being addressed. Uh, what is uh, uh, the historic, uh, so, so this, this, uh, this is what I was saying that uh, these two uh, issues remain. Uh, we have been using a complete response as a surrogate marker of local control and systemic control. Uh, what uh, are you aware of? What should be the criteria for surrogacy? What what is a good surro What is considered a good surrogate marker? Sir, on a yes. No evidence of any disease. Right. Uh, so uh, to uh, choose any any intermediate, say these are all intermediate events or biomarkers, which we are using as a surrogate of the endpoint of the final endpoint. So early and intermediate biomarkers need to be selected very carefully because they must correlate with the endpoint, uh, final endpoint, right? So there, there, there are uh, there, there is one called Prentice criteria for validation of surrogacy, which is a little difficult to practice. Uh, what is more commonly practiced is the one uh, recommended by by C et al., which is called the correlation approach. So I would suggest that as a student, you look into what uh, how to select a surrogate marker in the criteria for surrogacy. Uh, 
you see all these trials we've been talking about the three year disease free survival as an end point of these trials why is this three year figure the disease free survival uh, uh, the, the preferred uh, end point for all these trials what's so special about it so uh, most of the uh, recurrence uh, tend to occur in the first two years of, uh, of the intervention right and you see that it has been shown that the three year disease free survival correlates very uh, accurately with the overall survival uh, this has been borrowed from the colon cancer uh, studies uh, but it seems to work well for rectal cancers uh, also uh, just another uh, theoretical question why are rcts prone to a type 1 error what is a type 1 error do you know that the type 1 error is alpha error, sir. Mm -hmm. Where, uh, so we reject uh, the null hypothesis when it is true. So, right. RCT, uh, we start with null hypothesis. So, uh, you, you end up with a negative result, which is false negative. Uh, Dr. Dixit, uh, would you uh, like to raise some issues and discuss some other areas? No, uh, probably, sir, uh, the cost-effective uh, policy uh, in the both the things like uh, wait and watch policy, uh, you know, if you're strongly following for the two years with a more number of imaging, especially MRI and all that, you know, most of the patients, uh, you know, first uh, first year, when they are too happy with their functional outcome and the imaging results, the default rate is too high. I have seen that I have got a group of patients, you know, about 20 patients. First year, they are very concerned and they come for follow up and they feel that second year is gone. I mean, they don't come. So there, there is a lot of uh, default uh, in the imaging thing. And, uh, you know, whatever the set guidelines they don't follow, uh, but th this is all what we are coming, uh, coming across. And also uh, the uh, the cost. Uh, if it is a somebody is funding for the entire trial, and it becomes a very good uh, crystal clear with a lucid uh, thing. But uh, many of the patients, uh, you know, the the compliance with MRI itself, uh, especially those uh, you know the studies where if they have got some implants or if there any devices are there or people who are phobia to this MRI imaging, they say that uh, you do the some other scan uh, rather than the MRI. So uh, uh, critically, I, I think, uh, you know, how much to follow in our uh, uh, routine practice, uh, especially in our socioeconomic status. I, I, I myself is uh, having a lot of concern about, uh, even though the results are been showing that better results, but, uh, there is a lot of concern in our uh, settings that, uh, you know, following a uh, neoadjuvant short course therapy that operate at uh, second week or, uh, you know, just at the delayed first week and later. Uh, but, uh, you know, the majority of the things like uh, the fibrosis was a great issue on past two, three years in our clinical practice. Now we have evolved and with a better radiation planning and with, uh, you know, good MDTs and the discussion at every point. Once the patient comes, probably ima the imaging thing has gone very good, and also the uh, good MDTs and uh, counseling with a psycho oncology or a stoma therapist has gone very well. And uh, more than that, uh, you know that um, the uh, the RT planning has become so sophisticated. You know the required dose and boost, everything has been delivered. And I, I have not uh, seen much of fibrosis if we delay about. Uh, even uh, nine weeks or 11 weeks uh, following, uh, following the completion of treatment. I think uh, every, every step, the evolution has been happening. It is not the only, uh, the chemotherapies are making results or only the, uh, the, uh, the dose intensity has made the results. Uh, probably, I think we are still in the, in the, in the compile uh, of the multicenter results of our own. That is what is required from our country.
uh, but uh, to say that uh, whenever uh, we talk about uh, the 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 third and fourth uh, uh, you know the decade of life especially he's a if he's a, a only earning member in the society he looks try to you know spend more money and try to uh, get the results and all that but if it comes to the opposite sex like a female who is uh, who is just you know managing the household things and all that you know some uh, you know negligence on the part of the uh, the spouse is very common in our community they don't get the adequate uh, you know completion of treatment and the default rates are too high uh, but uh, when, whenever we say and probably we we have to be very selective now the things are coming biomarkers for all operable uh, rectal cancer is a uh, one of the thing we need to look at but recently we saw that you know that's something like a explosion that a patient with a high msi tumor they tend to have the complete you know they don't need any treatment uh, except the immunotherapy and uh, things so these are all uh, things which are coming up but we are in the era where there is organ preservation protocol has to be strictly followed up and try to give the best to the patient and uh, do the long term follow up and if not 2 years uh, try to at least uh, less frequency in the 2 to 5 years down the line is a more important uh, thing we need to talk about right so the uh, the the practicability of uh, in real time in the real world uh, needs to be addressed uh, when uh, we uh, have we are having a lot of splash even in the late uh, newspapers uh, for the public yes, about a new adjuvant treatment, uh, dostarlimab, uh, yes. as induction. And uh, what are your views on that? Because we know that chemotherapy is uh, quite toxic. And so do that, you think that, that as we go ahead- study people... has taken up only 12 patients, sir. And that okay. too, only in MSI high patient, the response is better. So in selected group of patients, we have seen the good response. So we need to have further more study, large number of patients. Right. So this 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 was limited to MSI high uh, uh, kind of patients, right? Yes. So with that, they would uh, con uh, constitute not more than say ten. 10% or 20% of the entire cohort. Yes, sir. So you have to be uh, careful about that. I think uh, we have completed our discussion so far as today is concerned. There could be a lot of things which can be go on discussing, but we have, I think, completed our time also. So Dr. Somshekar, should we continue uh, on some other related topics or I, I, I did we answer all the questions, sir. I think uh, that is an excellent discussion, you know. Okay. Very, very discussion. So we'll open QA and uh, a chat box. Rapido had double PCR 14 versus 28, still OS safe. Yeah, so uh, we all uh, have been seeing, uh, and it's well established that uh, the local uh, uh, control does not uh, always uh, affect the overall survival. Uh, in fact, the higher the local control, the more patients you will end up with having uh, distant failure rates. And for distant metastasis uh, uh, and distant control, we still do not have a very effective systemic treatment. So uh, that's the reason for that. So there is one question. Uh, what should be the gap between completion of radiation and starting of chemotherapy in a consolidation protocol? Ved, would you like to uh, answer that from the OPRA trial findings? It was uh, four, uh, four weeks, sir. It was four weeks after completion of chemotherapy. Right. And and what uh, what was the uh, gap in the induction phase? Induction also said it was. So uh, uh, 
Krishna, uh, 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 there is the, the entire protocol is available on the net, uh, so far as the OPERA trial is concerned. And it clearly mentions that uh, there was a gap of four, four weeks uh, from the consolidation. Uh, so after chemotherapy, uh, because you have already uh, given the radiation earlier, you do not need to wait uh, eight weeks or more than that. Is fibrosis a concern in delayed surgery? Dr. Dixit uh, has yes. said about that. Would you like to comment again on that, Dr. Dixit? Uh, probably, uh, you know, the planning and dosing and then how much to deliver the, uh, you know, the boost and the method of 3, uh, 3D CRT versus uh, IMRT, IGRT and uh, all these uh, things and probably the, you know, the patient factors also, the amount of fat in the mesorectal and uh, amount of uh, you know the um, imaging probably now uh, you know we are evolving into the uh, pet the pet planning also is coming up very uh, more commonly than the mri alone but uh, superimposition of double imaging probably might add up uh, in a proper uh, delivery of the dose to the target area and uh, uh, giving a pathological margin uh, all that is a factor i think which is help us I think 50.4 to maximum, you know, 54 is the, the dose which can be delivered in the, you know, the neoadjuvant setting, C, C, concurrent or chemo radiation. I think we don't have to go to a higher level. Uh, absolutely. Also, you know, I think Krishna asked this question because uh, yeah, the moment you anybody crosses eight weeks after the radiation, not the chemo, because if you see the rapido trial, they started with five fractions short. Then they completed the chemo and invariably most of the patient went for surgery at eight weeks. Now, if you cross eight weeks or from the radiation, not the total TNT protocol, then the fibrosis sets in. That was reflected in the final result where the conversion from minimal access to open in rapid or trial was higher than the standard of care currently. Currently, the conversion is normally not more than 6.8 to 7%. In Korean trials, it is 2.3. Robotic trials, uh, even if you look at roller trial, there are 3, 2 to 3. But it's accepted up to 6 to 7 percent is acceptable. But in Rapido, it was very high. And blood transfusion and morbidity of surgery was high. So it is very important to understand not to cross 8 weeks. 7 up to 7 to 8 pathological CR still is being set in. So we can't go before 7 weeks. But this issue of fibrosis and delay beyond 8 weeks not too much concern in conventional chemo RT where you do 5040 centigrade over five weeks. But this is a very high issue if short course high dose RT in five days is given and then you wait for eight weeks. To understand this, read don't not the medical aspect, uh, you know, uh, Krishna, go back and read the surgical aspects in Rapido and also surgical aspects in Opera. Then you will understand uh, what this fibrosis you meant beyond eight weeks, more so if you have used a short course. Also, it's very important, I would uh, tell all the students, uh, please go ahead uh, and read two important trials published in ASCO, both are randomized control trial. One of them is a TOTEM trial, T-A-U-T-E-M trial. This trial looked at, you know, total neoadjuvant treatment, then local excision. Please read about it. It's excellent. It's a video also you can read. Second trial is a StarTech 2 trial. This is a trial from Birmingham where, uh, like, uh, you know, uh, Abergama trial, you do a new adjuvant TNT protocol and those who have clinical CR, remember clinical CR, then you do total wait and watch. That's also an anime trial. So write down StarTech 2 trial and TOTEM trial. They're presented just four days back, very beautifully available. Then you will understand both the aspects, surgical and this. Then, uh... Thanks. Over then we have the question, the good, the bad, and the ugly approach. So the good ones are obviously the early rectal tumors. You have T1, T2. Uh, the bad and the ugly one are the locally advanced tumors. And uh, uh, then uh, whether you uh, call only the T4 the ugly or the T4 with N2 and the lateral pelvic nodes also involved, you see, uh, all these studies are very silent on what they do about the lateral pelvic nodes. Uh, uh, it, it is, we know that uh, 
for most of the surgical uh, interventions, the lateral nodes are not uh, addressed at all surgically in, in, in most of the practices. Uh, the more you address the lateral pelvic nodes, the, the higher the incidence of sexual and urinary uh, dysfunction is there. So uh, uh, th this initial which is not completely resolved. Uh, uh, the, the Rapido uh, had a specific, uh, was is very, very, very clear on inclusion of these, the real ugly ones. So if you really want to understand what the ugly ones, you have to look at the ra Rapido inclusion criteria. Are there any further questions? One uh, last question in the chat box. We, we, which is the group of patient in our country we, we can offer TNT? There's okay. uh, one question from that. Dr. Ridham Shah. Which is the group of patient in our country we, we can offer TNT? See, all we have done, all that uh, probably you know, the uh, all operable uh, low rectal cancer, uh, you know, uh, whatever we have discussed, I think probably uh, they can uh, uh, relook at all that. Dr. Ved, anything you want to add up a little bit in a nutshell? Yes, sir. Uh, the TNT approach is well suited for locally advanced rectal cancer in the middle and distal rectal tumor cell. So we can offer this approach uh, to this. Group of patients, and uh, as we uh, as we uh, discussed, uh, Rapido uh, looked into uh, advanced tumors and Prodi uh, selected all stage two and stage rectal tumors, and both of them uh, showed good uh, pathological complete response rate. So we can utilize for to stand up. Yeah, so there uh, uh, we do not have specific uh, uh, sub I mean, one to three criteria. What we must understand is that when you offer uh, a treatment, you offer it to a patient, not to a disease. You treat a patient, you don't treat a disease. So you have to factor in the patient factors as well as the disease factors. Like Dr. Wade said, uh, so far as disease is concerned, you only consider it for lower rectal tumors, locally advanced tumors, because these are the tumors in which uh, the, the issue of organ preservation is very important uh, because they might lose the sphincter or they might end up with a dysfunctional rectum uh, after uh, uh, a treatment. So, uh, but if the rectum is already dysfunctional and herein you have to evaluate the patient beyond the disease. So, if, if you look at the laryngeal preservation protocols, uh, the, the T3 with a dysfunctional larynx ended up with disease control, but with a dysfunctional larynx. So, so uh, that is why the RTUG9111 changed it to a, uh, a, I mean, you have to uh, have a laryngectomy free survival, and that larynx should be a functioning larynx. Uh, there's no point in having a tracheostomy and aspiration and all. So here, if, if you're doing a, a TNT, you are doing it, you have to be clear why you are doing it. Are you doing it for improving the overall survival, which it has not been proven, so you cannot possibly do it without uh, uh, good evidence. So if you are doing it for organ preservation, that organ should be properly functioning upfront and at interim analysis. So uh, these are the two things we have to consider. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, uh, sir, both. It's a beautiful analysis. Fantastic. This actually is a feast for students to understand the concepts. Uh, beautiful. You know, I, I, one is larynx, another is rectal organ preservation. Takes a surgical onco student through the evolution. Way beautifully presented, very well analyzed, and I know how well you are prepared for our exam. All the best, and you are going to come in flying colors. Uh, already I can see you no longer are a surgical onco student. You are completely getting matured as a surgical oncologist who is ready to go out and, you know, serve the society. Thank you, Somesh Bhai, and thank you very much, Jagannath. Superb yeah, yes. discussion. I thoroughly enjoyed and liked it, uh, and I'm sure students too. Uh, over to Navneet Singh Ji. Thank you very much, Dr. Ved Prakash Shah, for the presentation, and thank you very much, Dr. Jagannath Dikshit, Dr. Somesh Chandra, and Professor Dr. Somesh Shikha for joining us. And thank you, trainees and faculty members, for joining us.